or fatally injured here in um, in Walnut. And so I am still trying to find out more information. Law enforcement is still here. The roads are still blocked. But like I said, this building behind me suffered the most damage from what I've seen since I've been down here. And I've been down here around since around 4.30. I got here not too long after the tornado hit. So this building behind me and it was also vacant they had most of the damage at this building right behind me i'm reporting live in walnut aaron wilson wtva 9 news okay and another shot uh, as we mentioned there were numerous reports of damage in and around walnut this was i believe just east of walnut along 72 some power lines knocked down there hard to say for sure that it was tornado damage um, but there were a couple of rotations that went around the walnut area at the very least straight line wind damage that broke off a couple of those knocked those down there have been reports of power disruptions in and around tippet county as a result of this as well and there was one report um, and of some homes uh, that were damaged along, I believe it was County Road uh, or Highway uh, 354 there, uh, south, t was it? Yeah, 354. 354? Okay, yeah, our meteorologist John DeLuce confirmed that near Highway 354 on the southeast side there of Walnut, uh, some homes that were damaged as well. So we might, hey, uh, Liz, yeah. Liz, we might double check and have her check in southeast on Highway 354. Um, there's some reports of some, some homes that we, we got earlier. Just make sure that we, we catch that. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, still trying to gather information, obviously, as we go through this, but a number of reports there of um, some damage in Tiplerville as well, as you mentioned a little bit earlier on. At this time, we have a tornado warning that does continue for Octibaha County, and we'll try to get um, up one of the MDOT cams in Starkville on the southwest side of town, perhaps. Maybe we can get an angle on that. But the video that they were trying to show from Sturgis just a minute ago, this is that video, Corey Flanagan sending this in on Twitter. And what you can see here, certainly some rotation um, let's see if it'll pop it up a little bigger there. Um, I mean, maybe a little rotation, clearly a wall cloud on this. I don't have anything that's super defined, um, but it's always difficult in Mississippi. We always have those trees, um, and it blocks our viewpoint of it, but definitely an organized storm. No question about that. There's a good reason why they've issued the tornado warning on this. So, um, appreciate all the folks, uh, that do their storm, do storm spotting, that take these spotter training classes. Um, Corey, one of those, and we definitely appreciate that. This is looking a little more balanced. We talked earlier about the balance, bigger, smaller, the way this needs to look. This is looking a little more organized at this point here on Storm Track Doppler radar. Um, hold on. That's very close to where it needs to line up. Let's look at that ball there, and let's check and see the debris mode on Storm Track Doppler radar. We don't have any yet, but this is getting more organized as we speak. It finally looks like it's starting to line up the way we would expect it to. It's been a little out of alignment. So where are we at for perspective? Of course, we're just east of Craig Springs uh, that we're looking at this. Let's go to the rainfall mode. It's been probably the most reliable way to track the locations we're concerned with here. Um, just east of Craig Springs on the south side there of uh, Starkville, Octoc within eight minutes for you as it moves toward the east. We uh, continue to monitor cameras in and around the Starkville area. One headline I want to say, as you can see, driving rainfall, stuff you don't want to mess around in. And by the way, if your student's like, I want to see it, you're not going to be able to see it. The dark plus the rain, it's in the wrong spot for you to see it if you're in Starkville at this point. Let's stay at home, let's stay in a storm shelter, and let's uh, be safe uh, nonetheless. And so that, that's part of the reason why, uh, as we mentioned, we do continue to uh, monitor this as a potential tornado. Doppler radar indicates rotation that could develop into a tornado very soon. Right over top of Highway 25 is where that rotation is on the southwest uh, side, south and west there of um, Starkville. We cannot say that a tornado has been spotted. We have multiple chasers on it. You saw that lowering that wall cloud just a moment ago, what it probably looked like to a person uh, near the Sturgis area. And we cannot confirm debris at this moment, but the debris and the spotting happens after the fact. And if you're waiting until that happens to take shelter, that might be a few moments too late for you. So we just have to be extremely cautious. And so we need to go to the lowest floor of a sturdy structure, go to the middle of that structure, find a windowless room. It might be a closet, it might be a bathroom. Of course, windowless bathroom toward the middle of the house in my house. It's the pantry with the Girl Scout cookies, as we often talk about when we're um, out doing the school visits. It's just a way to incentivize people to go and take shelter there. And we, it's underneath a staircase, and it's reinforced, and that's where we want to be. Wrap up in blankets and pillows, helmet for the kiddos, and for yourself if you have one, and put it on your head as necessary. But we'll continue to monitor this as a severe thunderstorm that could produce a tornado, and it continues to intensify. And that's a significant concern here. Um, 
I mean, this is, this is pretty pronounced rotation, and it hasn't always lined up with exactly where we would expect it to. It's still just a little bit in the inflow area. This is, I mean, you might expect it maybe right there on the edge, but this is, this is definitely close. This is trying to get much more organized just within the last few minutes here. Let's check the debris mode. I don't have it. This is the area we'd expect it. I don't have it at this moment, thankfully. Um, let's talk about alerts. We haven't done that for a little while here. We want to make sure you have a way to find out you're in a tornado warning. It's possible we could have more ahead. Um, and so WTVA's weather call, the weather app, NOAA weather radio code red. Think about this as layers of armor. If one fails, another layer protects you, another layer protects you. Um, just more layers you have, the more safe you will end up being. And if your signal goes out, as it often does, if you um, get your signal in certain ways from us, then uh, WTVA weather app and WTVA news app, a way that you can get that live stream. If it breaks down there, we are on Facebook Live. We have a lot of folks still watching us there. Um, but our threat certainly continues to ramp up four locations on the south side of Starkville. Specifically, where are we looking here? Let's go road by road here for a moment. Um, as this continues to try to get a little more organized. This scan isn't quite as organized as last one, um, but well, there's Pike Road, there's St. Mark Drive. Now let's put on a few more roadways here. This is south of Starkville in Octibaha County. Uh, this would be Mount Olive Road, just south of that. I believe this is getting close-ish to the, to the wildlife refuge there. Um, so luckily not a super populated part of the viewing area. Um, but Octoc, certainly you are in the close range where we need to make sure we are in that tornado safe place. Uh, nonetheless, a heavy rainfall, lightning, that's what's all coming on this front part here. And then you have that. And so we'll monitor this very closely. Any updates from uh, Stan or any of the other spotters? Okay. Okay. Well, good. Well, hopefully that's the way it stays. If we don't have anything conclusive, that's a, that's a good sign there. So let's go ahead and wind this out. And let's make sure we're not missing something. All the storms north are running out of fuel. So we have, thankfully, misplaced a few things. The strongest winds aloft are way up here. The greatest amount of fuel is way down here. There's a transition zone where things get active in between. And at this point, it has limited north of this Monroe, Lamar County line here, that intensity. You can see that those, at least on this latest batch, continue to be a little bit a weaker and hopefully stay that way. Back behind this, there are storms. These are massively weaker and less impressive, but something we are still watching very closely. As we come down here to uh, southern Octibaha County, that's where a tornado warning continues until 7 p.m. Uh, you can see Starkville proper there. Um, and so a lot of those subdivisions on the south side of town, we're obviously talking just slightly south of that. So diff distance between um, pretty much campus there at Mississippi State, we're talking about six the eight miles south is probably where our rotation is at this moment. Um, that's not trying to tell you where to find it if you're one of the kids there, but just remember to be in that safe place, but also for the parents to know that that greatest potential is south and your kids, if they are on campus, are fine. Farther north, we, we haven't talked much about West Point. Let's try to get one of the West Point cameras up if we could, John, here in a moment. Um, there is a little rotation on this storm here and it has emerged from a real mess of storms that is the original storm that produced um, the tornado debris signature earlier on. That's what that is. So that is the storm. It's emerged from that cell merger, and this is still rotating as it heads more northeast. So let's look at wind on this. It's not overly impressive. Right along um, 45 alternate just south of uh, West Point, there's a little rotation there. That's not enough to produce a tornado. Um, but it is something we have to monitor considering that has still held together. Um, that's, that's incredible that it, that it emerged from that mess to still two independent storms. Um, here's what I mean. See, I'll watch, watch how that, in fact, none of the West Point cameras are up. It's okay. Well, we'll have to check um, to make sure that there aren't maybe some power outages there that we have to monitor. Um, okay, so that's um, West Point. We're watching that and clearly down in uh, Octibaha County, that is where we are focused. That is, 
Okay, so there are a few things about this that lead me to think that this, this could be strengthening. You can see there's a, there's a change in angle. Notice the edge of this has lifted just a little bit more the last couple of scans. This is continuing to be a, a clearer inflow area. The wind on this, let's check that and see how that is behaving. My interaction there is pretty much right at where the precipitation is kind of rotating around. For whatever reason, when I click it, I get six miles per hour, which is weird and probably not accurate. Hmm, interesting. Uh, let's look at the rainfall mode to make sure it lines up. Now well, it's just a little bit out in front. So just east of Octok Road is where my strongest wind rotation is. No, it's right there. So that's that's just a little bit ahead. Um, so rotation. Luckily, we're still talking about maybe's and possibilities, and we're not confirming. Um, we're not confirming what this what this is doing at this moment. Okay, now it looks like West Point has come up. Let's go ahead and get that M dot cam there. As you can see, winds, okay, so we're looking northbound, so this is the strong winds uh, coming uh, toward the camera. As you can see there, we're gonna see a few more raindrops on it here in a second, a little shift in the wind there going on as we look live in West Point with our uh, Mississippi Department of um, Transportation cameras here. Um, certainly, this is a, a strong thunderstorm. It is not officially a severe thunderstorm, but 40, 50 mile per hour winds absolutely possible out of this. It's rotating, but as we talked about a moment ago, I don't know that that rotation is tornado bound. This is, we were looking into that, that's that wind coming back around like that. That's the reason we're starting to see that shift more toward the camera here. Um, I wanna make sure, cause I could see the rain coming across here a moment ago. There we are, there's more of that northerly banding of rain, um, but it's not super heavy and we're pretty much now emerging from that along 45 alternate. And there you can see now just east of 45 alternate, that interaction on the southeast side of town there um, near Waverly Road is where this is at the moment. Um, and so if we peel off the radar site, and, and clearly this is, we're not convinced that this is producing a tornado at this point, um, but we are looking, um, I believe Waverly Golf Course is pretty close by here. Um, I'm having a hard time picking it out there. There we are. So right there is where the golf course is, old Waverly and radar. And let's put on the other higher resolution radar. And so this is just north west of that by a little bit. It is rotating from time to time. We've had this kind of return on a typical day. I would say that this is a step away from producing a tornado today. It might be just weak enough that it's not and hopefully we hold it that way. Um, there's our interaction, pretty much moving right toward the golf course at this time. If you live up here in West Point, inside the primary city grid um, and north of Waverly Road, you're in good shape. Um, south, obviously we still have some concerns there. Uh, one of the other things that we're watching is what's gonna happen next. And I think the National Weather Service, National Weather Service in Jackson is gonna go ahead and extend a tornado warning for um, Lowndes County, Central Lowndes County on this storm. The rotation continues to be strong. We continue to get reports um, of, of lowerings and, and, and of, of wall cloud on this. And so they're gonna do the right thing and they're gonna go ahead and extend this tornado warning eastward um, because of that potential as it continues to move into Lowndes County. Uh, so as you can see, the one for Octibaha County expires at 7 p.m. I'd be guessing at least 7.30 or so for the Lowndes County one once it moves eastward. Um, it will probably stay just slightly north of Crawford and it will pass near 45 alternate in about five minutes and 45 regular in about 15 minutes as it's about 10 miles away. Is that the proper? 45, 45 regular, 45 alternate. Can we get away with saying that? Uh, Let's that say regular. So that's 45 alternate. That would be 45, 45, 45. Um, regardless, it's gonna pass both 45s within the next 15 minutes. Uh, let's go to the wind mode on storm track Doppler radar. Still a little out of phase. That's a good sign. We're getting these reports of rotation on it and clearly National Weather Service, there's the issuance of the tornado warning that we expected. Uh, in effect until 7.15 p.m. now. Uh, it does include Lowndes County. It does include locations up and into Columbus. And I know there's a lot of folks that in a moment when those tornado sirens start going off will have a little bit of a uneasiness after what we've had so far this year. Um, this storm is working to organize. At, this is substantially different than the storm we had a couple of weeks ago um, I think at this point it will be a struggle for this to produce a tornado. It still could. It's still organized, but it's got a funky shape. I'm not convinced of that at this point. 
but I think we both know that it's necessary to get to that tornado safe place if you live in Columbus, just in case the primary threat is gonna stay south of town. Um, but we're gonna have to watch this very closely because there's a couple areas along there where that rotation is, is ramping up. And so if your signal ends up going out, we're going to be live right here at WTVA.com slash live, the WTVA news and WTVA weather app. Uh, so if there's an issue with the signal, it breaks up, um, you lose power, as long as you still have that cell phone data, we're gonna be live on that um, regardless. So, so let's um, be prepared and let's know that that is on its way in. So as that tornado siren continues to go off, um, we do need to be making our way to our tornado safe places. We live here in Lowndes County, Artesia, obviously in the close term here. Crawford, this is close, probably just a little north of Crawford, maybe some Crawford addresses with some issues with this. Um, but Columbus, we're watching this. You are on the northern edge of this. Uh, we feel, I feel fairly confident the primary tornado threat is gonna stay south of the primary city grid of Columbus. Let's go to that safe place just in case. Sturdy structure, middle of the lowest floor, small windowless room, wrap up a blanket, the pillows, put on a helmet to protect yourself if debris becomes an issue. And well, you won't know it's an issue until it's an issue, so put on the helmet just in case and stay put until we can give you the all clear. But I wanted to find this very clearly as Doppler radar indicated rotation that could develop into a tornado very soon. We do not have one that's been spotted. We do not have debris that's been confirmed. Those things have never happened out of this storm. There have been other storms that's happened with today, luckily not out of this storm. I say that to draw a distinction so that when you're looking at this, um, there's no reason to get uh, overly anxious. Obviously, this is a storm we have to monitor very closely, um, but it's moving much more east than north for folks there in Lowndes County. So again, let's get you a track. I will track this into Columbus in the chance that perhaps it does take that far of a northerly track. It is possible, and certainly we're looking at downtown Columbus here when we say 22 minutes. New Hope, much more in the pathway of this in the next 27 minutes, assuming it's still moving about 45 miles per hour, and obviously the Penns community in the next two minutes, rotation that could develop into a tornado if it continues at this pace. We want to avoid uh, structures that just aren't safe, mobile homes, large open rooms, upper floors, rooms with windows, we want to stay away from all those. You want something that has no windows in the middle of the lowest floor, cars and trucks, we don't want those, meaning we don't need any storm spotters out there trying to check and see well, what's going on. Speaking of what's going on, we're continuing to um, look into information. Uh, the folks at Four County um, relaying some power outages. They're not extreme, 139 members so far. As you can see, the greatest quantity of those just uh, west of the by -Y area. Uh, at this time, let's see how many that pops up with. That shows 68 customers out there. So luckily, nothing overly widespread at this point. And thankfully, no reports of uh, power outages uh, throughout Octibaha County, at least at this instant. Let me hit refresh on this. Let's make sure we got the latest data. We do. So that's a good sign there. So hopefully it stays that way. But there at least have been some power outages. Um, and that's the concern. If we get more of these power outages, that's why we want to make sure that you have the weather app and you're able to get um, that information as necessary. Current time is 6.37 p.m. We are monitoring on WTVA 9 News on NBC, on uh, WLOV, on ABC WTVA, as well as MeTV and This TV. thunderstorms with the potential to possibly produce tornadoes. Our confidence level on producing strong tornadoes is not high at this point. It's not impossible, but I'm not gonna sit here and say that I believe we're going to see strong tornadoes from here on out. I think if we see tornadoes, they will be brief, but, that said, the winds aloft are still strong enough. There's enough difference in wind change that still for the next hour or so, we're gonna have to babysit this very, very closely. Past about 7.30 to eight o'clock, the strongest winds aloft will start departing to the north and these storms will lose some of their rotation potential with them. But within that time frame, and we're still within that time frame, it's not impossible that this tries to put down a tornado. So we just need to be safe as a result and be thinking ahead and preparing and treating this uh, safely because of that potential that we are looking at here. We have had reports of damaging tornadoes today and it's not impossible that we get those again. I want to give a, always want to give a shout out to the people doing the right thing on Safe Place Selfie here. Uh, Charlie and Lisa sitting in this one here. They're watching, they have the helmets on. Yeah, she looks about as bored as I'm sure many of you are at home right now. She's having a good time there. And it's an opportunity to talk with your kids about Safety, safety in general. A lot of times in life, there's lots of fun things we want to do and we have to instead do the safe thing and it's important. So it's an opportunity to talk to them about preparing ahead, 
making a safety plan and where to go if that happens. And so uh, I'm glad to see that they are doing that. A lot of safe place selfies have come in. We haven't um, shown quite as many of those as maybe we typically did. Um, Morgantown looking towards Starkville there. Jenna sending us this picture here of some of the low hanging stuff. And clearly uh, this is out of that thunderstorm there. It's a wicked look to it. That heavy precipitation there, that's probably a ball that we've been tracking. This is that area, the updraft part where things are going in. I don't see anything. Typically if you're going to see a a, a, a tornado, it's not gonna be quite this jagged. That tells me that we're not having a bunch of really fast moving rotation. Typically it's going to be a little smoother um, because of because it would be rotating um, pretty quickly. Um, hold on. And, and, and so that lowering that you're seeing there, that's about all that we've been getting out of this to this point. That's not to say it doesn't do something else, but at least at this point, thankfully that has been the peak of what we have seen and getting reports even at this moment that still has that lowering that's where the air is going up into the thunderstorm uh, and there's certainly rotation but this is a weird shape for a this is a weird shape for a storm to try to produce a tornado most of the times when it looks like this it doesn't produce so f fingers crossed that is the case by the way octibaha county speaking of all clears uh, you have been removed from this tornado warning a severe thunderstorm warning continues um, but i believe that will probably be allowed to expire as well the storms that you have in octibaha county are below um below severe levels at this point. Uh, farther north, we were watching one in Clay County. This was a storm that a long time ago uh, near Montgomery County produced a, uh, at least according to the National Weather Service, Jackson, maybe a little tornado debris aloft, have not got reports. And in fact, we probably need to call Montgomery County just to double check on that, just to make sure that they have not had um, Montgomery and Choctaw counties. Typically, we would have gotten more reports at this point if there had been something significant. Um, but at this point, um, well, we're still still waiting to hear back from them, but we'll double check. Um, but at least at this point, this is continuing to show plenty of rotation, but just isn't quite aligned right. And so hopefully that is the way this stays. Uh, let's look at the wind mode on storm track Doppler radar. Oh, now hold on. Let's let's. I mean, and clearly we have some spotters that are on this and they're not reporting back. But okay, so we're watching right in that line. That's where our interaction is at this moment. Well, I mean, now it's it's got a little better angle on that than it did a little bit ago. So this is gonna be the next 10 minutes or so. Let's see if it, it's just a weird look to it. Clearly it sees, this, this hasn't updated yet, but it sees plenty of mid-level rotation. That's how you get this weird shape is because of all that rotation that you have aloft in it. It's just how much of that ends up pushing down to the ground. And luckily to this point, we have not had much fall into that category. I'm just looking back here through some of our pictures that we have seen. Um, I don't luckily see any damage pictures coming in out of this storm. Um, but I don't think I have to tell folks in Columbus, you don't get damage pictures and then something puts down on the south side of town. And I'm not saying that that happens again, but the point is, is that there's not always a ton of time between, you know, to, to show you, hey, this is what it looks like and then it happens. And so it's out of that abundance of caution uh, that we uh, that we advise you, that we encourage you to be in that tornado safe place in Octibaha County. Uh, excuse me, in Lowndes County. I'm thinking Octibaha County because they have allowed that warning to be canceled. It will expire uh, here in a couple minutes as it's supposed to um, on time. So they, as that threat continues to weaken. But this is getting a little stronger rotation just south of 789. Do we have contact with Stan, seeing where Stan is? We probably ought to touch base with him. Um, and uh, just, to, just to make sure. I mean, I'm not getting on the wind mode a ton of, of strong returns to show up, but this is a little more organized here now, and the rotation's at least in the, in the place we'd expect it at this point. So, so that's not exactly encouraging signs out of this. Uh, let's look at the precip mode again. I mean, it is kind of curling around just right. Um, National Weather Service still looking at this, uh, still looking at a... Uh, a little lowering uh, on the latest reports. You can see that mid-level rotation still there. Um, so it's a little bit out of phase, but not much. We don't have that much longer to get this out of the air. You don't want this to happen to anybody, but obviously um, we don't want it to happen to us. And so um, for all those prayer warriors out there, this is, this is one that's just on the edge. So let's continue to pray that the moisture just falls a little bit out of phase with this. We continue to watch the rotation on this northern one, but that is again, I think, too weak, well below levels where it can produce 
a tornado. Let's look north here. We have had a few other thunderstorms. This one near Belmont uh, that is a little below severe levels at this instant there, still showing some organization, but you go to the wind mode there, and this is mainly straight line winds. I know you have the green next to the red, but the way this looks, it's that straight line winds, probably 30, 35 miles per hour out of that. It's enough to make some of those uh, tree limbs definitely rattle around. Um, but probably not a whole lot more than that at this instant. Our tornado watch, which has been issued for a good chunk of the area, is slowly being peeled back for the western half of the area. You can see Atala, Montgomery, Grenada, Yalabusha, and uh, Lafayette counties have all been excluded now from this tornado watch, and we'll watch those continue to be, um, continue to be shaved off as we go through time. Is he in position? Stan's on, hold on, let's go. Okay. Hey, Stan, where are you at? I am on Oscock Road. Uh, Southern County, South of Okay, so you still still probably have a view of it. It's probably not a great view, um, but you still probably have a, probably a better view than if you were close up, honestly, because the way this one is. Um, what do you see? I'm um, right now not seeing much of anything. Just a little bit of light rain. Haven't really seen any damage. That's basically all I'm looking for now is trying to find where the if there was one on the ground where it crossed and if it did any damage. Okay. Because uh, it basically got too far ahead of us to try to catch it. Okay. As far south as it was, so we just thought that going south on Octot, going to see if we can find where one may or may not have crossed the road. Okay. Well, keep keep looking, um, and it, it's just the southeast of GTR Airport where we're watching it right now. Let us know if you find anything, and uh, be safe. We'll talk to you a little later. I appreciate it. Okay. That's our stand door with North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters. The reason, by the way, why they look for damage like this is that, you know, they do, you want to make sure that, I mean, this has not produced damage. I don't think we necessarily feel it's touched down, but you just want to make sure that people get the aid they need. And as much as we want to stay on these storms, know what they're doing, uh, that obviously people take uh, our preferred, not preferred, what's the word I'm looking for? They're obviously more important than uh, chasing the storm itself. Um, but certainly the information we get from those chasers is valuable, and uh, we appreciate Stan. This continuing to show that rotation north of Gilmer Wilburn Road, just south and east of West Lound School. Um, this is not as organized as what we had a couple of weeks ago, but there's still an area of rotation there that, that we're monitoring a couple areas along this, what we call rear flank downdraft is where the air is coming back out of the thunderstorm. And there's a few spots here where it's trying to curl in with the inflow. This would be a kind of a weird spot for it to be, but not impossible. And the fact that it kind of curls back around there with just a couple of those pixels there is a concern. You can see certainly the radar also looking at the southern part there, and there's certainly rotation there as well. But this has been, that rotation south has been where a lot of the time here we've kind of had that, that, that wind trying to curl back around. So a couple areas there that we continue to watch for Columbus proper. Uh, let's give you some distances here. So from the southwest part of the city grid of Columbus, we're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of about eight to nine miles to your south and west. That's where uh, these rotations are continuing to move toward you. So that means that our time continues to tick down as well. I'm gonna make sure we keep uh, Columbus in the track of this. And you see that has it within the next 10 minutes. So definitely monitoring this closely. Uh, okay, so let's look at Columbus here. This is one of our MDOT cams, downtown Columbus at this point. A lot of folks on the road. It is spring break weekend for a lot of folks out there as we get, get to that time of the year. Um, might call some folks if you know that they're driving to or from some location, let them know, hey, you know, tornado warning near here. Um, one of the concerns is that it has kind of pulled this rotation farther north than it was originally going, at least one of the sections of rotation. So if you know some folks in Columbus um, that might be one of those folks speeding through downtown or on the highways right now, make, make sure they're aware that, hey, this is out there and it's generally coming your direction. I want to track this a little more east to catch New Hope um, and, of course, Whiteberry area in about 11 minutes, New Hope in 15 minutes, McCrary there within the next 20 minutes, and just at 19 minutes for you, rotation that could potentially develop into a tornado if the storm continues to, uh, continues to organize. We're kind of in a critical mode here, and there are a couple of spots right there, right there, that we are watching very closely. Wind mode, storm track Doppler radar. I'm gonna go back and forth here for a moment, so give me a second here to really analyze this. 
I still put a preference on this north one. You could argue down here south, they're trying really hard. Neither of these is a, probably a tornado at this exact moment, but neither one is terribly far away. By the way, old report, Choctaw County, few power lines reported down by emergency manager there. Um, so as we continue to gather that kind of information, that's probably obviously part of the reason why there were some power outages there. So one encouraging sign on this, and I don't want to play up the encouraging stuff too much. Clearly, we want to make sure that we're still in our safe place. But you see this, this weird, like, green area where it's getting in here? Our what we call forward flank downdraft. There's, there's more of a V here, and that V is getting deeper in. And that was something that happened with our storm up in Monroe County earlier on as it continued to whittle and erode away. Um, so hopefully that's a sign that this one is losing a little more of its uh, intensity it is in an environment. This is one of the most fertile environments, and by that I mean one of the environments that's had the most time to see the instability of the fuel spike up and maintain today. So that's obviously one of our concerns there as this continues to move eastward. Okay. Okay. Uh, just some house cleaning stuff here behind the scenes. Uh, tracking that eastward again, we're looking at New Hope 14 minutes, 9 minutes in the Whiteberry Lake Lounge area in about 15 minutes. Our meteorologist, Alan Eastward Matthew. Montgomery, just a couple trees down, Matt, uh, on Highway 413. We just confirmed that. Something we were seeing online. Okay. Uh, mentioned to us. Okay. Couple highway. Of trees, okay. Matt. Couple of trees down uh, on Highway 413. Um, do you have them with you? Okay. You're good. No. Well, I mean, yes, I would take some. Um, we are watching this one near Columbus, so by the time you get back, we'll know for sure. Um, no. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, um, thank you, Emily. Thank you, Alan, for those reports. Trees down along Highway 14, no homes damage there. That was Montgomery County? That was for the main director of Montgomery County. Okay, good. Okay, let's reset here for a moment. The current time is 6.50 p.m. Uh, I'm meteorologist Matt Lawpon alongside our meteorologist Alan Matthew, John DeLusick, the entire WTVA news team here trying to gather information behind the scenes. You'll notice these reports are coming in very sporadically. That's a good sign. When we get floods of reports, that's a bad sign. And so it's sporadic reports, a few trees down here, um, you know, a few reports of uh, a damage here, the exception being up in uh, Tippa County very early on where we had a substantial tornado touchdown in that it had a number of reports of damage. And we're still trying to assess exactly what happened there with that and how strong that damage was. Um, but clearly there's a, there's a preference here for locations, Lowndes County and it's far southeast Monroe County where these storms are the strongest. And when you have this much storm activity right on top of one storm on top of another, that's, that's, that's actually, believe it or not, a good sign. That means it's all competing for the same fuel and it's difficult for it to get everything that it needs. So now we're looking here south of Columbus. There are two areas that I'm watching. Where you see that spin there, that's one. Where you see that yellow little finger coming up there, that's the other. Wind mode on storm track Doppler radar. Couple, both those areas have some rotation with them right now. And this one's getting a little stronger near Lime, Lock, Lime Rock Road um, on the south side there of Columbus. I'm going to get a track from both of these, and I'm going to include New Hope in both these tracks. So the southern of those... Whiteberry Community in seven minutes, New Hope in 11 minutes. The northern of those, I'm gonna include Columbus in this track and then we're gonna go more east in this. It might not pull directly north like this, but we're six minutes in the middle part of town. That means three minutes into the southwest part of town. This is not a tornado at the moment, but it is certainly trying to increase. Looks like there's an area of cyclonic convergent winds just southwest of Columbus. Absolutely, that's what we're looking at here. So that is that, that middle area that's Weather jargon for that you see there. Okay, so that is what they're watching. Clearly we have this rotation south, but that little area there where things are swirling in, um, we're not likely to put down a long-lived tornado, um, at least not at this instant, but that is rotation there now near Old Macon Road that's on the southwest side of Columbus. So if you live in Columbus, we need to be in that tornado safe place just in case. I wanna go back here a couple scans, make sure Yes, I am seeing that right, because you can see that kind of heading northward. That is our rotation there. Let's look at the wind mode on Storm Track Doppler radar. 
still continuing to organize. It's not extreme pixel to pixel wind change. We look at the debris mode here. We don't have any in either spot. So this is not producing a tornado now, but as we always say, this happens after the fact. We confirm this after the fact, so we can't confirm a tornado at this moment. But as we've mentioned over and over again, this is a tornado warning, and it's something we need to take seriously. Give me 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll move on with our Saturday night. You'll move on with yours. We'll be continuing to monitor things here um, behind the scenes. But give me 10, 15 minutes if you live in downtown Columbus or in Columbus proper, and then we're good. Um, so sturdy structure, middle of the lowest floor, small windowless room, wrap up with blankets and pillows, and put on a helmet as necessary to protect your head and stay put to uh, there until we can give you the all clear. As I mentioned earlier, we, we do try to give those all clears as often as we can. Sometimes we get tied up with what's going on. Let's give some all clears here. If you live in your GPR airport, you're good to go. If you live west of West Lowndes School, you're good to go. If you live west of 45, either alternate or regular, you're good to go as well. Um, obviously, this is encroaching upon the city grid of uh, Columbus, and there are two areas of circulation here. In f this is looking, oh, uh, this is one, two areas right there that we're tracking, uh, pretty much crossing the Tom Bigby River at this moment, it looks like. Um, that's where our rotation, well, honestly, they're both just about crossing it at this moment. Let's look at the wind mode here. Hold on a second. Visual lowering. A bit bigger over the last seven, 10 minutes. Okay, so spotters continuing to refer to a lowering that is increasing in size south and west of Columbus. What does that mean? Well, the, the lowering is the wall cloud. The wall cloud is a part of the thunderstorm that hangs below the rest of it. Um, let's give a shot. This, that's not a good one. Let me see if I can find you a picture of a wall cloud. Um, we'll count this, we'll call this good. So second here, so this would be an example of what they're talking about. This is not the specific one, this is being an example kind of, we see there's a little interaction there, but you get a lowering back there. This is not a good example of a wall cloud. But anyway, it's lower than the rest of the cloud and it happens because air is being forced up very rapidly, forces the bottom down. That tells us that it's a strong updraft and that's a step, then it rotates, then the tornado happens. So it's a step getting closer as it enlarges and strengthens to trying to produce a tornado. So that's why, um, that's why we are still obviously encouraging you to be in that tornado safe place. We have to be the lowest floor of that sturdy structure. Um, two areas there that we're concerned. One, I mean, it almost looks like, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Alan, that we've had a storm split. Am I wrong here? Look at the south now, look at this north. Here's the north one over the city grid of Columbus, and there, there's the one on the south. It's almost like we had, had a cell split there occur. Yeah. That's, the fact it survived the cell split is impressive. Wind mode here. One of our circulations is now on the southeast side of Columbus, over 795. The other one is just south of 795, west of Whiteberry, moving in the direction there. Uh, we'll stay just south, perhaps, of New Hope. It's, a, it's not the clearest cut return. That's good. Clear cut means something bad is for sure happening. This is still maybe, possibly, and hopefully we stay that way. Um, so I have my circulation pretty much right there. I put over your city grid there in Columbus. Right now, kind of pretty much over downtown. This is pretty close to the track of that tornado a couple weeks ago. This is different, hopefully substantially weaker. At least it looks that way right now. Hopefully stays that way. Uh, but clearly we have some folks here that know what can happen and that's the reason why we have to hope that they are taking this seriously and staying in that tornado safe places. This northern rotation tracks there closer to 82. The southern rotation, uh, something we're watching as well. Our meteorologist John DeLusick, though, with a new information coming in here uh, just in the last couple moments. We'll get John's mic up. John, yeah. what are you learning? Uh, we got Jay in Columbus live in uh, torrential rain right now, if you want to take it live on Jay three. with the North Mississippi, yes. North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters? Okay. This is our Jay Robertson with the North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters uh, in Columbus right now. Um, obviously, he he is a <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, but he's a professional driver on top of being one of our uh, storm spotters. And so uh, he is monitoring this very, very closely. Um, I'm gonna get a live video going on here on Facebook because for whatever reason, <sighs> hold on. Tornado warning continues Lowndes County. Okay, sorry. So while, while we're looking at this, while we're waiting, it looks like law enforcement certainly trying to keep folks there safe. And it looks like it is oriented my video the wrong direction. So apologize for that for, the, for those folks on Facebook Live. Um, we don't see anything imminently obvious here on this, so I don't want to dwell too much on that while we have the potential for 
uh, these to continue to strengthen. But John, watch that closely. Let me know if something changes uh, and we'll go from there. That southern rotation continuing to strengthen. I don't necessarily believe that 112 miles per hour that's kicking out there. Um, I think that's just a little off. Let's check the positioning here. See, it's in that inflow again. So this is that stuff we were watching off Tibaha County where it was just showing these extreme wind returns and they just weren't producing. Let's track that eastward. I'm considerably more concerned with the northern one at this point. Uh, Whiteberry, three minutes, seven minutes. New Hope, Lake Lowndes, eight minutes. McCrary there, 10 minutes, 13 minutes. Stafford. By the way, please don't take the fact that I'm more concerned with one of these or the other as an idea. Oh, well, we don't need to worry about it. We don't need to be in a safe place. You need to prepare and be in the lowest level of a sturdy structure regardless um, just to make sure um, that a human, and humans make mistakes, isn't putting too much confidence in one of these versus another, okay? We do believe, at least at this point, this is the more, uh, more tricky. It's obviously through the more populated area, um, and luckily this is broad enough. I don't believe that to be a tornado at this moment, thankfully. We'll look at the debris mode here on StormTrack Doppler radar. There is no debris, so that's a good sign there. So uh, the last couple of scans, that northern one there has gotten a little bit weaker, Hopefully that continues to be the case. You can see those characteristic little hook shapes on these other storms farther north. Uh, clearly that shows the rotation we have in the atmosphere. It's strong at this moment. Uh, current time is now 7 p.m. I'm meteorologist Matt Lawpon alongside our meteorologist John Lusick and Alan Matthews. We continue to monitor uh, severe thunderstorms, in some cases capable of producing tornadoes. Uh, we do have other thunderstorms that have formed behind this primary line. There's not a lot of fuel left for these. Am I going to say it's impossible for these to produce damaging weather? No, it's not impossible. Is it likely? No. But we'll watch it nonetheless. Uh, and as we've mentioned before, some of our tornado watches continue to be uh, canceled out. Memphis has gone ahead and canceled all of their counties out. That's probably a good move. And Jackson's holding on just in case that next line does something a little greater. That's just their prerogative to go ahead and do that. And this watch was issued a little later, so that's why they're doing it. And then obviously our Alabama County is still um, more in the immediate pay attention to this zone. We do continue to have until 7.15 a tornado warning for eastern Lowndes County. We've had no indication from the National Weather Service Birmingham whether or not they plan to continue this into Pickens County. We'll continue to track it as we uh, look at the one that has the stronger rotation, but maybe the less effective rotation, Whiteberry community, uh, now uh, pretty close to the New Hope within about two minutes or so. Lake Lounge, six minutes. Ethelsville in 12 minutes. We have not confirmed tornado touchdown out of this. Um, and this, this part of the thunderstorm has uh, multiple times uh, kicked out really strong winds on radar, but luckily we have not had a lot of damage reports with that. The rotation on the north part of this uh, continues to now exit uh, the Columbus area moving towards Steens. We don't have those bright, you know, toward and away pixels here. So luckily this is maybes, this is possibilities, and we have not confirmed anything beyond that. And hopefully that is the way that this continues. But certainly, uh, certainly this has been a long lived thunderstorm. It's showing still signs of rotation and it's something we have to respect. And so let's just talk about for a moment here what we have. We have a tornado warning that's been issued for Lowndes County in effect until 7.15. That warning issued for Doppler radar indicated rotation that could develop into a tornado. I don't know if I'm going to say very soon at this moment, but let's just say soon, okay? Spotted? Nope. Confirmed debris? Nope. And hopefully it stays that way. But as we say over and over again, you have to prepare by getting or at least knowing where that safe place is. I would still be doing that if I live in Pickens and Lamar counties out here in Alabama. Sturdy structure, middle of the lowest floor, small windowless room. That's where you need to go. Wrap up in blankets and pillows. Have a helmet ready. You're ultimately just trying to protect yourself from flying debris. Stay there until we can give you the all clear on this. And as far as all clears are concerned, we can do that, I'd say, for the city grid of Columbus, primary city grid. You can come out of that tornado safe place here. If you live east of, let me get our roads right here. Um, if you live east of 7, is that 769? Hold on. 795. If you live east of 795, we still need to be watching this very closely near the Whiteberry community there. And obviously this is moving toward New Hope at this time. There's still rotation here. And hasn't produced, hasn't produced, hasn't produced, doesn't mean won't produce. So that's why we have to watch this very closely. John Allen, have we had any, speaking of reports, have we had any new reports out of this storm over I the course of the last little while? I haven't seen any. Uh, I've been observing the Jays. Uh, you, uh, Allen, might. Nope. Nope. That's good news. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to push it and say maybe we have. Have we checked the 2nd Street 
John, just to make sure that the, the pictures and the information on that. Which one now? Second Street, you know, the app. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll double check that just to make sure there's not something uh, coming in there. Yeah. And just to, um, here's, here's another, I'm going to try to pull up a, a video here. This is when this storm was south of the Starkville area. This is what storm chasers are up against. And by that, I mean uh, it's very difficult to see. Oops, it's going to pop that up full screen, but it's, it's, this is very low contrast. It's very difficult to see exactly what's going on, but you definitely have the lowering there. Um, it's an organized thunderstorm, but now at night, spotters are just basically looking for the lights of the city and to see if there's flashes of light, what, whether there's lowering or not. So that's why we have to rely increasingly more when we get late in the evening like this on Doppler radar. But that tornado warning continues until 715. It does include New Hope and locations in far eastern and southeastern Lowndes County as it moves toward the east at about 45 miles per hour. Sometimes it's on the doorstep of New Hope, so you're going to see a time that's basically now. Uh, Stafford in six minutes as it crosses the Alabama state line. McCrary should be showing up, but I would put that in about six to seven minutes as well. Update from the National Weather Service. It is more of the same, and more of the same is good in this scenario. It is possible tornado, winds that are rotating, no confirmation, and hopefully it stays that way. You can see uh, certainly still showing that mid-level rotation on storm track Doppler radar, looking at the wind mode here. I mean, any other day I would look at this and go, wow. Um, but this storm has just struggled to produce. Now, that's not to say it's not doing now. Um, let's look at the precip modes, go back and forth here. We're watching right there. Those four pixels, what I'm looking at. It's right there on the edge. I'm going to make this the grittier version of storm track Doppler radar, and we're going to drop the smoothing off completely. And I'm going to pull this little swing and circle, okay, because I want to see what the exact pixels are doing here, okay? Nope. No tornado. This is still strong winds in advance of this, thankfully, but this is probably not a tornado at this instant. Could it develop in the one? It's not impossible, but Lake Lounge is in the path. That is the most likely location to see that. Uh, and so let's get a wider track here into Pickens County. Okay, Jay is, do we know where he's at? Oh, okay, we're pointing down at, 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 let's see if it has his location on it. Call Jay Robertson. So we'll find out from him here in a second. Is he, is he Facebook Live with that or is he? Okay, okay, good deal. I'll find out from him where he's, so make sure he's in the right spot down there. I cannot reach him. I'm no shocked about that. That's always a problem. Okay. Um, there we are. Hey, where y'all at? Okay, hold on. Uh, can I put you on speaker? Is that okay? Okay, watch the language. Okay, so this is uh, Dean. He's a meteorologist uh, with the North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters, uh, Jay Robertson as well, uh, on this. We're going to get that live stream back up here in a second. Um, and and you're just northeast. You're basically in the rain corps. Yes, we're in the, the core part of the storm. We're driving uh, southeast right now, trying to just get south of the storm so we get a clear path. Okay, where, where specific? You're on 82? Yes, you are. Okay, um, we'll be safe. So you're, you're going to go 82 and you're going to try to get back. Okay, I got, I, I got the plan. Um, have you seen any damage in that part? There was an area of rotation that went over that area. Have you seen anything that resembles damage? No, no we have not. Not even twigs. Not even what? Not even twigs or leaves. Okay, good. Fantastic. Not even twigs or leaves. Okay, if that changes, you got my number. Let me know. We'll be watching. All right? Okay, be safe. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, that's uh, Jay and Dean with the North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters. We appreciate them. Uh, if you haven't heard that name a lot, uh, that group definitely helps us out there, our spotting crew, and it makes our job massively easier, the hard work that they do on a day like today. So we appreciate them very much. We appreciate all of your spotter reports as they continue to come in as well. Um, safe place selfie. Give credit where credit is due to give people... Um, credit for doing the right thing, not just going out and trying to snap pictures. The whole crew here, uh, we, we are in our storm safe place uh, outside of Smithville. Thanks for all you do. Patty, thanks for you all setting a good example for the little ones there. It's important that they know um, what it takes to, to be safe and how to be safe in this kind of scenario. 
Uh, 7.07 current time, our rotation uh, now tracking into Pickens County, Alabama as it continues to move eastward. Thank you. That's a perfect place. Good work. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Good to go. Love you too. Bye. Okay. Um, let's widen this out. Let's make sure there's nothing else we're missing. I will say this, that northern storm, remember this split a minute ago? That northern storm's a little more dominant but this southern one is just eating it up. It's just, it's just eating up the moisture. And so this, this, it looks stronger, but it's just being cut off. This is working out perfectly, where these are just, they're working toward one another, um, and they're working against one another, and that's, that's a really, really good sign. So I'm glad, glad to see that. Um, no new damage reports from Lyons County, anything like that, Octibaha County? Tish Bingo, okay. So, Okay, well, we'll get we'll get those up when you when you get those. Let me know, and we'll we'll go from there. Um, a lot of heavy rainfall farther north here. This is all just. I mean, this is the line. <sighs> the hard part about forecasting nowadays is that models are so good. Yet you know they're wrong in some way, but they're so good. Like this is a a line of supercells. That one's rotating. That one's rotating. That one's rotating. That one's rotating. So is that one. So is that one. And the models had that. The projections had that. But these aren't quite strong enough to produce, even though every single one of them is rotating right now. Uh, so maybe just it's, as a meteorologist, it's amazing how good modeling has got that it can tell us that. The difficult thing to decipher is, is today the day where the, all the components are perfectly in place. And to this point, we have been just that far out of sync, with the exception of a few storms that we had earlier on that produced some damage, especially up in Tippa County. And the newsroom continued to work on some that sounds like might be from uh, Tishmingo County as well. So we're continuing to follow up on those uh, leads. If you have damage reports, um, you can